the town board. The public is yeah, the public is starting a meeting, Ed. <laughs> the public is invited to participate at the items marked on the agenda public comment. During that segment of the meeting, if you have a question or comment for the supervisor, please raise your hand and wait to be acknowledged. Please state your full name and limit your remarks to three minutes. Thank you for your anticipated cooperation. This is a first meeting of the month. This meeting will be a Zoom meeting due to the coronavirus. I'm right here. Can you hear me? Okay. okay. So uh, I'd like to start a meeting and start the meeting off with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. And somebody got a flag, you got the flag. There you go. Nice flag. I pledge allegiance. allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, a moment of silence for our brave men and women fighting all over the world for democracy and freedom, and especially for our uh, first responders. Uh, and also, uh, we, we lost uh, Evelyn Bogdan. Is that correct? Uh, Evelyn Bogdan. Yeah, she was our clerk for about four years. So. Uh, anybody that's uh, been doing this job in service and support in the town of Marlboro. Uh, so Evelyn has passed and uh, uh, our condolences go out to uh, her family. Uh, I need a motion to approve the agenda. A motion. Need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None being said, so moved. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, motion to approve minutes from the uh, November 23rd, 2020 uh, town board meeting. I need a motion to approve those minutes. I'll make that motion. Need a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None being said. Thank you, gentlemen. Motion carried. Uh, authorized payments of the uh, bills, uh, 259. Make the motion. <laughs> Let me finish how much it is. <laughs> I, I ask you at the Hey, do you got some place to go? <laughs> I think he's out of sync a little bit, so okay. I'm asking him to log back in. Okay. So, uh, the payment of the bills is $259,337.26. And you need, you need a motion to pay the bills. I'll make that motion. Uh, just a, a point of reference. Uh, uh, a lot of that's from uh, Mr. Zambito, Zambito, who just uh, did his yearly uh, put in his own horse for the seventy nine yeah. I'll second. Uh, I'll second it. Uh, yeah, and the rest was uh, we finished the phase two, and also we finished the uh, uh, the all inclusive playground. Uh, so those checks were included in that. I got a second from Councilman Corcoran. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, comments on the agenda. Do we have any comments on the agenda? No comments. That being said, uh, we don't have any presentations tonight. So we'll go right to uh, the reports of the department. Uh, do my brief report here. Uh, I met with the uh, members of the police reform committee and we're gonna meet again tomorrow, right, Howard? At yes. 11? Okay, yes. and that's going well. I mm -hmm. uh, met with the uh, town lawyer and uh, zone, uh, town zoning enforcement, Mr. Corcoran, to discuss short-term rental codes with our lawyer. Attended a meeting with the committee during uh, doing the inventory for the historic buildings. I have not heard anything from them getting any kind of pass from the chief. So we'll I see asked him to check on that, I, you know, and Neil is supposed to be getting back to me, so. Okay. Uh, I had the weekly meetings on Wednesday uh, with the executive on the COVID-19. Uh, met with Central Hudson Lisa Carver, discussed a variety of community issues and business opportunities. Um, I'm trying to, uh, we have about $70,000 left over on the grants for sidewalks. I'm trying to uh, 
uh, do uh, uh, talk to uh, Dasney to change that to uh, bring it from Marlboro to Milton to do the Main Street, uh, where Pollock is. Mr. Pollock is going to hopefully build some uh, retail and uh, apartments above that. Um, so that looks good. I, I, you know, I, I, it would be great if they could do something with uh, putting the wires on the ground, but talking to her, it would be, it's just too expensive, especially with uh, all the uh, transformers and everything that are on the telephone wire. Well, I tried. Uh, uh, attended the meeting of the board of uh, Milton Train Station Foundation. Uh, they changed uh, presidents. Uh, John Scott is now the president, and Sherma has uh, stepped down due to uh, family uh, matters. Uh, convened the, uh, the grand opening of the Marvel uh, Nature Trail. I wanted to thank uh, Councilman Corcoran and uh, uh, Legislator Thomas Corcoran for being there, and Howard Baker. Uh, there was about 50 people there. It's a it's a very pleasant opening. Uh, Great to see all those people there and it's being used. I hear quite a bit of people saying that they uh, they love it. Uh, met with uh, Chief Kokosa and Highway Superintendent Alonji, uh, discussed the Liberty Medal presentation. As you remember uh, a year ago, maybe further back, I think it's about a year ago when that incident happened with the oil truck and uh, some of our people from the highway department and the uh, uh, police department uh, did uh, outstanding uh, performance, bravery in saving that man's life. So uh, I just don't want to prolong it any longer, even with COVID-19. So we're working out a date, uh, probably it's going to be around the 22nd, 23rd of this month at the uh, highway department. And then uh, attended the uh, Marlboro Police uh, Blue Light Tree Ceremony, and I thank uh, Councilman Corcoran, Councilman Baker, and uh, Legislator Thomas Corcoran for being there. It was a great event. And there's quite a few people there. Uh, I'd like to see more because of what's going on to support our local uh, police department, but I'll take whatever I, you know, we could get. Anyhow, uh, it was a great event. And uh, I'd just like to thank uh, Split Rail Nursery for two trees that uh, Thanks to uh, Councilman Corcoran, we were able to uh, get in the highway department cut down and uh, they're up. Uh, one of them was the blue light ceremony and that was uh, Kurt Fulton did a fantastic job uh, ceremony in that event. So thank you to Kurt and thank you Scott for arranging those trees to uh, be taken. They were beautiful trees. They were really, yeah. quite, they were really nice trees. Yeah, they were gorgeous this year. Yep. So that's my report. And uh, so we go to uh, Tom, building inspector. Okay, building inspector report, November 2020. Certificate of occupancy five, request for information 14, building extensions three, fire inspections 19, fire calls two, ZBA applications two, orders to remedy six, Complaints 26, burn permits issued 15, building permits, additions, renovations 2, burning 15, carports, garages 1, commercial permits 2, deck stairs 2, demolitions 1, electrical 6, furnaces 2, generators 1, hot tubs 1, roofs 10, sheds 2, single family homes 2, solar panels 5, tank installation removals 1, Wood or pellet stoves, one. Estimated cost of building, $12,027,126. Total permits, 54. Monthly revenues, certificate of occupancy, 750. Permit extension, 635. Building permits, $16,086.44. Request for information, 1400. Fire inspection, 1665. Burn fees, $65. ZBA application 600, ZBA escrow accounts 1400, total fees for the month $22,601.44. Sounds like you been busy. <laughs> it's been busy. Gas use is 92 gallons and total miles 1328. A lot of new homes going up, Tom, or? 
Yeah, our average over the years, you know, once we got past 9-11 was on an average of 16 to 20. We're probably at about 40 houses right now. We'll, we'll end up and next year I'm expecting to, to be back in that 80 to 100 mark, just like the years after 9-11. Wow. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you very much, Tom. Do you want to do a report on the COVID-19? Uh, I'll, I'll hit that later. Yeah, I didn't. I, I'm starting to put it together now. Okay, I, I see we're quite a bit up there. We're yeah. up, but not as much as Lloyd. Lloyd is oh, my God. Lloyd is up there. Yeah. Okay. Now I just want to make sure everybody knows. Uh, Sheila Manisi's on, and uh, Catherine from uh, uh, Times Hudson Valley Media is on. Catherine Dunleavy. Thank you very much, Alan. Okay. All right, if you want, I, I, I can give the one. So as of a couple of days ago, I mean, this is a couple of days old. I haven't uh, hit it. Ulster County's total positives were 4114. Uh, that increased 619 from last uh, last week. Orange County was at 18,534. That was an increase of 1459. Total active cases were 4, 1476, which was an increase of 494 from last week. Uh, Marlboro was at 280, increased of 40. Lloyd was at 379, which was an increase of 97. Platticill was 307 with an increase of 37. Uh, as of today, we had tested in Ulster County 165,000 people, 429. And uh, that was up almost 10,000 people from last week with 161,000 negative test results. Uh, unfortunately, uh, over the last week, we'd lost six additional people in Ulster County with a total uh, uh, death of 107 people in Ulster County since March. Do you know how the hospitalization rate is holding up our hospitals or? Our know? hospitals are holding up okay. Um, our, our ventilators are good. We're, we're, we're in good shape right now. I don't have the exact numbers, but I haven't heard anything that, that has gotten us in the red to make us in a dangerous level. So far, we, we're looking, we're in good shape. Do, you, do we know, have any idea when the vaccine will move up uh, uh, north here in this area? I know they're starting to do the uh, first right. responders and the nurses and everybody down the city. But Right. We did the first nurse this morning, and then they were supposed to get 10,000 vaccinations out today. So uh, today there should be 10,000 vaccinations done in New York, but yeah, mostly first responders down in the New York area, New York City area. Uh, they haven't given us any kind of exact uh, times on when it was going to start moving up or when the vaccines would, would roll more, you know, into uh, to upstate New York. But um, it's just a kind of a waiting game. They're spreading it out. Is the, ne the next uh, uh, population are the seniors in the nursing homes? That's correct. Yeah, okay. okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh, somebody like to read the, uh, no, the police chief. Where's the chief? In the middle. Oh, there you go. You're up to the right-hand side. Chief? Activity summary for the month of November 2020. Personal injury auto accidents, four. Fatal, zero. Property damage accidents, 25. For a total of 29 for the month. Uh, summonses issued vehicle and traffic, 81. Uh, parking tickets issued, one. Total bladder entries, 1,615 with a total arrest of 28. Uh, telephone calls handled 1,801 calls. Uh, we had no overtime for full-time dispatchers and 16 hours overtime for part-time dispatchers. Police mileage for the month was 12,325 miles. Consumption was 1,166.675 gallons. We had no use of force reported this month and one civilian complaint. Thank you, Chief. Any questions for the Chief? Okay. Okay, thank you. And uh, tomorrow we'll be going up to uh, celebrate those gentlemen uh, that uh, are going to receive the Liberty Award up by uh, what you use guys up in, uh, is it in Kingston we're going or where are we going? Where are you taking it? The Ulster County Chiefs of Police Association right. has awarded the uh, four guys from the Highway Department a uh, plaque and uh, memorial award for meritorious community service heroism. Uh, they're going tomorrow in a structured uh, presentation at uh, 9.40 in the morning. They'll accept their awards. We'll do a quick photo op 
with the uh, executives and then they're going to kick us out. They have a time schedule that they're doing this. Uh, normally we have a, a very large um, dinner that yeah. they do every May. Uh, I know the supervisor has been to it. Uh, Mr. Corcoran has been to it. Uh, Mr. Baker has been to it. Uh, unfortunately due to COVID, they weren't able to do that, but they felt it important enough to still give the presentation and the plaques to the people that have earned them. Uh, so that's what we're doing at 940 tomorrow morning. And uh, it should be, should be very nice. Look yeah, forward looking to forward to it. I'm looking forward to it, Chief. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, somebody like to read Mr. Alonji's Highway? I can do it. Yeah, I can do it. Yeah, can do it. Give me one second. Got it. Okay. Uh, monthly report for November 2020. Roads. We repaired the driveway entrance uh, at the town reservoir with millings that had been washed out due to the recent rains. We continue our road patrols. Drainage. We replaced a uh, man-made catch basin with a new one on Chris Corner. We repaired catch basins on McLaughlin Drive, Mount Zion Road, and rebuilt one at the intersection of Orange and Bloom Streets. So we continue to clean out catch basins and pipe ends throughout both hamlets. Brush slash weeds. We spent a good part of the month with our leaf cleanup by removing uh, leaves in all the ditch lines and catch basins throughout the town. <coughs> our annual tree trimming, removing dead branches and trees. Shared services. On 11.5 and 11.9, we sent two trucks to haul blacktop for the town of New Paltz. Snow slash ice. Our pieces of equipment that need to be stored for the winter have been winterized and put in storage. We continue to service all of our equipment and replenish needed materials in, in preparation for future storms. Fuel usage, gas, 241.808 gallons. Diesel, 545.514 gallons. Respectfully submitted, John Alonji. Thank you, uh, Alan, for reading that. I'm sure, I'm sure his, his next month is going to include some snow removal from the <laughs> yeah. storm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be a big one. Well, it might. They don't know right now, do they? No, they I don't. watched the news before. They said 12 plus, but who knows? Yeah, who knows? So uh, anybody like to uh, read uh, Charlie's uh, water department uh, report? I got it if you don't. Got I got it? it. Yeah, yeah, water superintendent, town of Marlboro, Charlie. Um, God. Okay, yo. Uh, read monthly report for November. Water consumption totaled 16,505 million gallons, which is a daily usage of 550,160 gallons compared to last month, 18.035 million gallons, which is a daily usage of 581,700 gallons compared to a year ago. Water consumption was 15.25 million gallons for the month which is a daily usage of 508,300 gallons. Summary for the month, hydrants, we had to drain and pump out hydrants for the winter season. Curb boxes, we had to repair curb boxes, two Highland Avenue and one South Street. Service lines, we repaired a service line on Church Street. We had to relocate a service line on North Road. Town Park, we had to winterize the bathrooms and pavilions at the park. Closing six, markouts 30, gallons of gas 195, mileage for the month 1510. Charlie Majeo. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. Colleen? Sorry, I'm going to call you back. Town Clerk monthly report for November 2020. Burn permits one for $70, conservation 13 for 56.26. Dog license is 16 for a total of $100. Transfer station permits, one for $30. Punch cards, 20 for $1,375. Marriage licenses, two for $35. Building department fees, one for $12,712. Fire fees, one for $525. Accident report, 17 for $85. Certified copy, six for $110. Boy request one for $7.75 for a grand total of $15,106.01. Thank you, Colleen. Any questions for Colleen? Uh, so I'll do the wastewater treatment uh, uh, for the month of uh, November 2020. Both the Marlboro and Milton wastewater treatment plants complied with the Speedy's requirements. The following are monthly set 
statistics for both plants. So Marlboro WWTP, average daily flow, 101,000 gallons per day, about 58% of design capacity, average BOD removal 99%, average suspended solids removal 95%. The Milton water plant treatment plant also is uh, average daily flow is 30,000 gallons per day, about 55% design capacity, average BOD removal 99%. Average suspended solids, solids removal is 85%. Both the Marble and Milton plants operated normally during the month of November uh, without any major changes or events. We have received and reviewed preliminary design plans from Venera and Larios Engineering for the uh, dechlorination system for the Milton treatment plant. It has been mandated by the New York State DEC to begin the coronation or discharge. I have met with the engineers on site and should be receiving final designs in the near future. In addition, we have replaced the Ulster County Resource Recovery Agency roll-off containers with a eight-yard covered dumpster from Lamella Lame Sanitation. Ulster County Resource Recovery Agency no longer provides roll-off containers the NOAAs are obtaining a 360 permit and we'll be hailing our dry sludge from now on. Uh, if you need any additional information, please do not, do not hesitate to contact me. Stay safe and be healthy. And that's Julian Falco. Uh, once we get those, I think we have a time frame when we have to install that dechlorination and uh, I'll let you know what the dentists and those guys come up with as far as costs. I know they're going to the minimum uh, uh, design, so it's just tablets that they put in uh, uh, this system, and uh, hopefully it will be within reach that uh, we could uh, uh, pay for it. Either way, we have to do it, so we'll find out <laughs> how much the cost is going to be. Uh, so, hey, we have a special guest star here. Andrew, you can read your report, please. Okay. Who, who normally reads it, Al? Uh, it goes around. Everybody does it. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. Uh, nice to see everybody. Uh, all right. Uh, so, the monthly report for November 1st to November 30th, total number of calls that month was uh, 14. Number of calls that came from the police and the Ulster County Sheriff are nine. Uh, we have three open cases which are ongoing but not resolved. We had zero dogs impounded this month, uh, zero appearance tickets issued. However, we did have several court appearances from uh, tickets we had issued earlier in the year they were trying to get caught up on in the court uh, before they've uh, kind of closed it up again. Uh, we had one dog bite reported this month that was a, uh, a child who was bitten in her own home by their own family dog unfortunately uh, so there's no action on our part for that and that is the uh, end of the report so andrew also uh you sent me a letter and i uh sent it out to the board about your idea about the dog park and we've had yeah. some issues there and yes so i'd like to for you to uh, uh express what your concerns are and what you'd like to propose to the board a absolutely um so uh, we, we had a couple of, I've had a couple complaints over the last couple of years from people against other people at the dog park. Um, this past, uh, not this past Sunday, but the Sunday before we had two Sundays in a row where there was uh, groups of people who were not getting along with their dogs. And both times they called the police and of course the police go down there and they're intervening with these people. Um, the second they, they called me, told me what happened the first time. The second time they went back, I was able to go down and talk to them. I heard a familiar name from the week before. I wanted to kind of get involved. And uh, and I realized when I went down there that the, uh, the people at the park, um, if I was able to um, do a couple things, if I was able to provide them with some more information on our website that they could read up on and have a second sign there directing them if any questions or about the dog park and dog behavior at the park, you know, look at the website. And the other thing is I'd like to save the police officers from having to go down there. Um, they, uh, you know, that, that same day, Sunday, they had gone out at three o'clock in the morning and not woken me up to do a, a call, a noise complaint, which is very nice. Same time, I'd like to make it so they're not 
you know, two weeks in a row, uh, a couple of people went out the first day, a couple of people had to go out the second day. I'd like to get, um, the, the, I'd like to be able to get involved and save them having to go out there for those kinds of complaints. And uh, what what I found is I, I'm, I'm doing a lot of research on other dog parks. I wanna make sure I do this right and effective to the point where hopefully there'll be enough information out there where they won't have to call anybody. Um, and and one thing I, I realized is, uh, um, you know, like if, if I was to come into a town board meeting and run over and, and tackle Al, run around two times and take his ball, it would of course be inappropriate. That's not exactly inappropriate for a dog. And the dog behavior in a pack, just the, the people weren't recognizing that this is normal behavior with the dogs. And once I got, there were four or five people there and I had to talk to that day. But once I talked to them and explained it to them, they kind of got it and they're, you know, they, they, they kind of understood. So I'd like to put something pretty thorough together, just like a one page, an easy read. If they go to the website, they can read through the information and it will probably prompt them to not make a complaint or just go at a different time or, uh, you know, just lessen the burden on the town and, and keep people, so people get mad. They go there next week and it happens again. They get even more mad. It just kind of compounds to the point where they're calling the police. And so if we could do something to mitigate that, that would be my, my goal. So I have kind of an outline put together. Um, I don't want to take the sign down that's there. That's great. And I spoke to, um, to Kathy Allers, uh, I guess her son, was the Eagle Scout who helped put that together and, and her husband, Terry. Um, I spoke to her today. She's going to put something up on the Facebook group, you know, to point people to the web page when we get it. But I'll put something together. The uh, second part of this is for me to go um, for me to go down there and talk to these people um, and have any um, authority. I'd, I'd have to have some kind of appointment to say I'm the the manager or something. I don't want to write tickets, but I, I'd need a, a reason to do two things to keep a log book when there are complaints. I'll keep a bound book with all the complaints written down in it just so we keep track. But if I'm going to gather their personal information for something other than I'm appointed for, I would need the board's approval. And I'm not looking to be a dog judge. I'm looking to make it so we can provide them the information and not have to uh, make decisions about, you know, uh, who can go there, who can't. And then I'd have to set up some process where if we have a situation that's not able to be resolved, that I could report to the board, hey, this is what's happening, and let you guys make the decision. You know, um, but I, I understand it's a state funded, um, it was state funded, so we can't, um, you know, disallow people who don't live in the town of Marlboro to go. And uh, I had a few people suggested that to me that I was talking to. But um, so that's that's where I'm at right now. Um, so I'd, I'd like to uh, put something together. Uh, maybe we could go over to the next board meeting. But I would like to ask if when you do the appointments in January, if you could um, come up with some language that would give me the, uh, um, you know, permission or authority to to go down and, and try to mitigate some of these complaints. So, so Andrew, it sounds more like there's a people problem, not a dog problem at the park. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right, Al. Yeah, but uh, uh, people don't know. A lot of people don't understand. They they look at the situation differently. So you just get a chance to talk to them, and they say, "Oh, yeah, that makes sense." And, yeah. Um, you know, do, dogs get in a pack, and they uh, you know they they try to who's the alpha dog? Well, you're going to find out in about a half hour if you keep them together. And, yeah. Uh, so. So that, that's what I was looking yeah, at. So it's, so it's not dogs mauling each other. It's dogs, basically, no. dogs are thieves. I mean, everybody knows that. Right. So if one dog's got a ball, the other dog's going to want to get it. They're just Correct. thieves. So. And, and what you might, uh, what one person might say, this is aggressive behavior, is just a dog playing. Mm -hmm. You know, aggressive behavior in my book is a dog tries to bite another dog is vicious and going to cause harm. And uh, that's not the way everyone interprets that. So some definitions in our uh, webpage of, you know, things like uh, aggressive behavior, rough playing, you know, what a submissive dog is, a dominant dog, alpha dog. Let, let people read through that stuff. And they start to get a picture of, hey, this is a different world. The uh, dynamics of a, a, a pack of dogs playing together than, uh, you know, than a pack of people, you know, getting to get, well, a group of people together, so. So Andrew, uh, under uh, dog control officer, you don't think that covers it? I mean, the dog park, I mean, do you are the uh, dog controller. You're our, our guy in Marlboro. Right, I am. 
and uh, it i don't i don't see why you need any any further uh you know titles or you know something to give you uh it's not legal right i mean it's not a, like a legalistic thing if we made you uh the uh the uh, uh officer in control of the dog park that may that may that may well be the case but i think in my job description it says to um to enforce the um statutes of article 7 the ag and markets law and the town code relating to dogs and animals so and there's nothing in there about dog parks no there's nothing about dog yeah there, there probably isn't but i mean andrew are you asking for like basically the authority for like expulsion like is that what you're saying like if you go there and you recognize hey it's not yeah. a dog problem it's a person problem or a people problem no are you asking to be able to remove certain no. like a certain person for the week for a time for time being just want to explain to them it, no if it if it was going to get that serious i would report to the board and say hey we have a problem this is the problem and i would let you decide that's not my and i wouldn't I certainly wouldn't threaten that either that's that's uh i'd like to solve the problem and you know get people to go at different times or whatever it takes you know as a I like the idea of, you know, helping the chief out and not sending an officer there now and when you could uh, mitigate the problem. How does that sound to you, Chief? Is that something that you could work with, with Andrew? Yeah, Andrew comes and bails us out all the time and all kinds okay. of things, not just dog stuff. Um, but I, I can understand him having a title that would represent even uh, some sort of authority over the park. Um, you know, People tend to react differently when when it can reflect being the park management or something like that. Um, it, I'm thinking he's just looking for a title, right? Uh, to reiterate, hey, I'm the supervisor of the dog park, or I'm management representing the town for the dog park, and it'll actually be official through I don't know a resolution or something. Yeah, no, we could do that to a reorg meeting. We could just yeah. give that title. Yeah, yeah. I, so you do it like do it like the park that we do, Tom. Tom's the park uh, superintendent. Yeah. Right? So yeah. make Andrew the dog park superintendent. Yeah. But because, I agree. because I'm a civilian and I'm appointed, I'm, and uh, I'm, I don't think that I could legally keep a log book and ask people for their personal information if they're violating the rules of the park. I don't think I can legally do that without well, make it dog park right. superintendent. You should be able to. Right. Yeah. But yeah, how, that's you important. like that title, Ed? Yeah, good job, Al. <laughs> we'll, so we'll do that. We'll make you the dog park superintendent. Is that all right with everybody? I'm fine, but yeah. Okay, so we'll we'll do that at the reorg meeting, Andrew. And meanwhile, you could come up with the rest of your present. You know what you like to propose to the, yeah. to the town board. Okay. Is there anything else? I'm good. You good? I'm good, Al. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Andrew. Have a good Thank night, you, Andrew. Good job. Yeah. Thank uh, you, Andrew. Thank you. The uh, next thing is Cindy Hilbert. She, uh, we prepared seven. I, I have that, Al. Oh, you got it. Okay. All right, you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We prepared. We prepared seven property tax <laughs> estimates. You just went off there. Hold on a second. We processed 29 real property transfers. We have been preparing for multiple small claim assessment hearings being held the weeks of November 30th and December 7th. We have been getting small amounts of our exemption renewal applications this month, which is very common. We're sending out reminders, notices, beginning of January. We have also been working on collecting our new construction and reviewing our building permits. So Cindy Hilbert to the town board. Thank you, Ed. How would you want to do? Uh, Quite welcome. Mr. Brennan's uh, report, please. Yeah, let me hang on a second. Uh, bring it up here. Uh, let's see, planning board review for November, 2020. Uh, looks like you had a full set of people there on uh, November 2nd. Um, the agenda approval of the stenographic meeting minutes for 10-5 were done. Uh, first item on the agenda was Pond View, 19 Sunrise Drive in Milton, a public hearing for a lot line change. 
The public was reopened. Uh, the hearing was reopened and closed with no input from the public. A resolution of approval was granted unanimously. The next one was Twin Pond. 2007 Route 9W Milton final site plan. The applicant needs to provide additional clarification of several outstanding issues. They will return at a later date. The next item was Justin Vada at 9 Rivercrest Lane and Marlboro sketch site plan. Applicant's request for a lot line was granted unanimously using the town streamline process with one correction on the final map to be made before signing. Discussion without lawyer was the next item. This is Mark Francos at 387 Latin Town Road in Marlboro. Mr. Franco sought advice on how to proceed with his plan for a B&B &B at the above address. He was provided with the appropriate information on how to move forward. Next deadline is Friday, November 6th. Next scheduled meeting, November 16th. Okay, and then we move on to the November 16th meeting. Everyone was there uh, on the board. The first item on the agenda was Twin Pond 2017 Route 9W Milton final site plan. The attorney for the town requested additional time to complete his review of the previous approval granted at this location. The board agreed the outstanding issue over lighting on the site was not a concern. The applicant will return on December 7th, 2020 for final approval. Next item was Nason subdivision 89 Peach Lane and Marlboro sketch subdivision. Town engineer reviewed several technical issues with the application, which require clarification and or correction. The project requires Ulster County Health Department approval for well and septic locations and specs. The town highway superintendent will review driveway location and placement on site. Clarification regarding accessory structure on site needs additional clarification and or remediation. The applicant will appear at the next meeting. Next item was Guarino, 5 Ashland Drive, Marlboro Sketch Subdivision. The town engineer reviewed several technical issues with the applicant, which require clarification or correction. The status of Ruby Road, which appears not to have been constructed, requires additional information to be provided, as two of the lots appear to have access via this roadway. Proposed septic requires Ulster County Health approval. The applicant will need to provide grading profiles and driveway grading plans due to the steep topography on the site. The applicant will reappear at the next meeting. Next item was HSC Milton LLC, Dollar General Route 9W Milton sketch site plan lot line. Applicants representatives have reappeared. Board member Couchy recused himself. The applicant has still not provided the planning board with a lot line change map depicting the entirety of both parcels being clearly depicted and was again asked to do so. Stormwater prevention plans, comments from the water superintendent, Ulster County Health, and the New York State DOT review are outstanding for the proposed project. The board discussed lighting and landscaping and the desire for the applicant to depict and install sidewalks on the site. The applicant will return at a later date. Next deadline, Friday, November 20th. Next scheduled meeting, December 7th. Respectfully submitted, Chris Brand, Chairman Town of Marlboro Planning Board. Thank you, Howard. Yep. Hey, Al, question yes. on the planning board. There's a couple of them in there. Doesn't the attorney get the information prior to the meeting? Like, it seems like every time they come to the meeting, then they have a problem with the application. Then they tell the applicant, and then the applicant's got to come back again. Why don't they tell the applicant via email that there's a problem with their application? So when they come to the meeting, they already have the information. Well, it's it, like we're, we're having them come there first, then they I've come back. That, I asked that question many times. And so the, the uh, Pat Hines explanation is that when they review it, and if they told them what the problem was, they changed it, and then they come back in, it's kind of, uh, it confuses everything that's going in order. So that's, that's the response that they get. So when the app comes in, he usually comes in with the first thing. It's the same thing, you know, if if you do your homework and you do it right, you, you won't be coming in multiple times. But if you don't and you, and you don't do it right, if you don't have somebody like Patty Brooks or somebody and uh, that knows what they're doing right, then you'll keep on coming. Like Twin Ponds has been in front of the planning board for, I don't know, three years now, Tom. <laughs> Finally come, it's, you know, it's like, it's better than it ever was. It's cleaned up. 
So I think that's the progression. But you know, I could always ask Pat Hines, you know, and that was, and that's why I did ask him because I, I thought maybe we could streamline it where, uh, you know, the applicant knows ahead of time what he has to do and his engineer has to do. But it's according to yeah, there's that's, almost that's like a matter. Of that's like a, a matter- step missing there. There's like a step missing yeah. prior to them coming in front of the planning board. Like, like they almost got to meet with Pat Hines before they come to the planning board. So it just, just seems like there's a step missing in there because they, it seems like every applicant almost comes to the planning board in the first meeting. Every almost every time it says there's stuff missing and you got to come back. Well, you know that's that's the whole thing. I mean, if you do your checklist, there's a whole. I mean, Tom has a checklist. The town board, the planning. But even board. when they do the checklist. He says, well, I don't like this or, oh, well, I really don't. No, like I, don't th- I don't think they take no. advantage of the applicant. That's for sure. I don't think I, mean, I don't think Scott's saying they're taking advantage of the applicant, but I just think it's a matter of communication. As, like if you're the yeah. applicant, like just let me know if I show up at this meeting at seven o'clock on a Monday that I'm going to have an issue. Like it's, it's the thing is, this is the easy. way it's been. The process has been. Since you've been councilman, since Scott's been councilman, yeah, and since you know I've been a supervisor. Yeah, and you know what, Al? When I was like, when I was two years old, I wasn't in a car seat. So the process isn't always the best. Well, you're so aware of what's going seat. on in the planning board. So I mean, every every every. No one's blaming the planning board. I think yeah. there's something wrong with our attorney who's not answering questions prior to a meeting. If he has the email, he should email the applicant back and say, "Hey." Well, that coming to this meeting, you should you should do this. Well, there's other issues. There's escrow and everything that's acquired that has to be assured that the escrow is there for the lawyer to actually talk to the applicant. So there's a lot of process in here. I know know? this seems to be this seems to be one step missing that it just. I'm not defending the planning board. All I know is that the process. I asked Pat Hines. I asked uh, Jeff. This is the process, the way it's well, been. I would, I would ask as a board member that the planning board and the planning board chairman sit down with the attorney and they come up with a little better process. That's that's my I recommendation. Think the planning board has already established a checklist that they're checklist reviewing. Besides the checklist, I want to see something prior to the first meeting that the attorney and the, and uh, and the applicant has a conversation. Because there's a conversation missing before the first meeting. Well, the I'd attorney like has to get a hold of the engineer. The engineer has to get a hold of the. Uh, the uh, saying there's attorney. something missing now. Scott, I think there's got to be review of the. But Scott, isn't this sometimes more than the first meeting? Sometimes it's the second, third, fourth. It's the second, third, meeting. and fourth it's meeting. Continuous. It can't it's absolutely yeah. continuous. You guys, you, do you attend the planning board meeting like I do? It's I've continuous. Been to a few of them, Al. I've been to a few of them. Well. Lately, I don't know, but yeah, the whole but thing is continuous. Continuous. Adam, there's a problem. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that there's a. I'm just saying if it's continuous, there's a problem. Well, no, because that, that's, that people that's have the to keep coming back to our planning board, and they have to keep paying a fee, and they have to keep paying for this escrow, when they should just be able to get this. Just like when you have it with uh, when you had Chestnut Petroleum, and you had a big meeting with the county, they sit down prior. They're going through all this process and they get a lot of these things straightened out before they sit in front of the planning board. It seems like we're making our have discussions. We have money. Discussions. It doesn't need to be done. That's all I'm saying. They have discussions now. So if somebody had uh, would like to know what was going on, they could have a discussion of it without the attorney and the lawyer. So they have that. They have that. Uh, oh, There's that something whole- broken here. There's something broken that they got to keep coming. Every every everything we get from Chris, which he does great reports, almost every single time it says applicant has to come back. Applicant has to come back. Applicant has to come back because the attorney doesn't like something. It's it's the no, same it, story it's, it's over, and and over and over and over. It took of years both. to build a gas station and a Dunkin' Donuts. So don't tell me. Okay, let's, not let's not go there. Let's not go there, please. Let's not go there. I've right been now. in that process with Dunkin' Donuts there for six years. There is a years. broken process in our planning board. There's a process, to, and I would like. I'm asking. I'm voting for a vote. I want. You don't need a vote. Ha- you don't need yeah, a vote. All you have to do is do an email. All you have to do is an email, Scott. Send them to the chairman and tell it live right now. I'm doing it live. I'm asking you live as the supervisor. I want to see a review of the planning board process again 
by the planning board to see if we could have a better process. That's all I want to see is a better process that's streamlined better because there's something broken here. There's just something broken. Well, uh, all right. why, don't, why don't you and I go back as the planning board representatives from this okay. town board and go back to Chris and, and ask, you know, if we can have, have that meeting in the first that. meeting in uh, I would appreciate it. I really appreciate January. It. Yeah. We can have that meeting in January. We could have a Zoom meeting and you could be involved and Alan can be involved also. But, I would appreciate but, that. What about me? I like it. But, but if you took, for instance, the Twin Ponds, right? They knew what they had to do. They I'm knew. Anything off now, the Al, I'm not taking Twin. You. Yeah, Al, Al, I'm not taking Twin Ponds. I'm not taking another big project that was done. What I'm taking is like the every every day person who's trying to do something gets so agitated, whether it's a, a lot line revision, a site plan, or for talking, a commercial. Yeah, we talk the same. We're talking the same. We're talking <laughs> no, I'm not talking. Oh, about... Hold on, whoa, 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 Al, Al, don't put words in my mouth. I'm not talking no, to anybody. I'm, not, I'm, not I'm talking, talking to the everyday person. Is what I'm talking about. Well, we every day when I'm talking to the people that are in front of the planning board, it's the same story. I went to the meeting and I have to come back and I have to come back and I have to. I did what they asked me to do and they didn't like what they saw. Don't put words in my mouth. Don't ever do that. I didn't say I didn't put any words in your mouth. I didn't do that. I'm saying that is. Most of the people, the players that come into there are players that know the system, but they take advantage of it. That's what I'm saying. I've been there. I know the players. I know who takes advantage of it. And I, and I think the process works the way it, you know, I, what can I tell you? And Tom, you smile. You, I mean. You want, you want the, you want the missing piece. So here it is. The, the, you're going to go to the first planning board meeting and you're going to get a punch list. There's, there's, there's almost probably no doubt whether Patty Brooks does it, whether you represent yourself. So there, there's that, that punch list that you get. And, and here, here's the, I'll be the, the guy in the middle. Cause again, I, I, I could understand both sides of this. I understand Al saying that people sometimes don't do their due diligence and, and they drag and then I understand the other side where the, the applicant gets frustrated because there's so much going on. The real problem is, is, is it becomes where the attorney or, or the planning board or the engineer asks you to redraw maps five or six times. That, that becomes the problem. So what I think what's missing, I think the, the, the small piece that's missing is you go to the planning board and you sit down and you get your punch list from Pat. All right, Pat's going to give you your punch list. You, you spelt Marlboro wrong. You, you miss this, you miss that. And that happens. It's, it's very simple. But I think maybe the, the small piece that, that's missing is that after Pat reviews it, the, the punch list comes back the second time. Are you going to get that punch list when you sit down? When that punch list comes back for the second time, maybe the applicant can be informed by email prior to the meeting, because there's two weeks in between, to say, hey, this is what, this is what we're going to tell you on Monday, whether that comes on the Wednesday before, the Monday before. I don't know what the time scale is, but at least if you know coming into the meeting what that punch list is, you might be able to address some of those problems with your engineer, with your surveyor, with your architect prior to the meeting and satisfy Pat at the next meeting. So that might shorten it up a little because that becomes the, the ultimate surprise. I, I took your punch list from last month and I believe I fulfilled it. But then when you reissue that map, there's a second punch list. Again, and, and that's through nobody's fault, not the applicants or maybe Pat's or the planning board. It's not their fault. They're, they're potentially there's either something missed or something wrong. So I think if a communication is done prior to the second meeting, because you're not going to get perfect the first time around. Patty Brooks represented Twin Ponds, and there was a lot of stuff that Patty had to replace and redo and, and, and catch up on. And, and that's okay. But I think maybe your missing part is the communication prior to the second meeting, that second punch list, because you're going to get it. You're going to get the second punch list and you're going to have to, to, to readjust something. So I think maybe that's what you're looking for is communication prior to the second meeting. So maybe you have a heads up and you're not being ambushed at the second meeting and maybe have an opportunity to correct some of that. Yeah, I, I think ambush is a harsh word, but uh, uh, we'll set that up and we'll have a planning board meeting because I'm sure they like to streamline uh, things uh, also. Like, 
uh, our legislature, what we did was we streamed the uh, line, uh, like the lot line change. It's a one appearance in front of the planning board. Uh, so uh, without a uh, public hearing and stuff like that. So those are the things that the town board did to streamline it legislatively. So uh, well, well, wait I, a second. I took care of that because it took forever. I fought forever to get that streamlined for the lot line team because it was ridiculous. Uh, whoever did it, you know, it's it, it's in the process. Of no, the, no, no, no. Let's, no, let's not let's not go whoever did it because I fought you guys for a long did, time. So it. Don't let the town board take credit for that because you fought me for a long time on lot line revisions. I never. It was, no, it was nobody's business. I never. Lot line revisions were being taken care of. I know. So don't tell me the town board took care of that. Because the town board fought me for years. I never fought you on that, Tom. Fought me for years. It took. I took care of that. Don't Tom. don't give me the town board took care of that. Tom. I took care of that. Tom I, took I, care I, of I, the I, lot I, line I, revision. I fought you on that. Tom took care of the lot line revision. We have a code in our code book that says now it's a you could streamline it. It's a one appearance. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Tom, yeah. you might have brought it up, but the town board passed. It's a resolution went to the lawyers. We took care of it. I never fought you on the lot line change. Never. Uh, there was, there was a lot of fighting in the lot line changes. The reason I brought this up, Al, is just basically what you said. I think we did a lot of good things to try to streamline things. It just seems like there's a little one maybe step missing that we, because I'm sure, like you said, the planning board, I'm sure, wants to streamline this stuff even more if they can. So yeah. if there's something we could come up with, I think it would be great for the whole yep. tent, for everybody. So I agree. So we'll set that meeting up and we'll continue the conversation. Mr. Supervisor, can okay. I say something here? Uh, you no. can, James. As, as a member of the a member of the planning board, uh, we we are looking at uh, revising the checklist, uh, hopefully to improve it and eliminate some of the the problems that were. We're having, and there may end up being mul probably end up being multiple checklists depending on what they're coming in for. So I would like to say that we are trying to uh, address the the problems to reduce the number of times people come back to us because we don't really uh, want to see some of the same problems occurring over and over again. Uh, so we are looking at that. Uh, and I believe the applicants do get a copy of the engineer and legal uh, checklist reviews that they do. I think they get those prior to the meetings. So I think they have those in advance. The problem is, is there's not much time in between the meetings. Right. So it's a very short time and for them to try to resolve some of those issues which take a long time all right thank you thank you and james thanks because i know you're the one working on those uh revisions so thanks for doing that and uh if there's if there is problems like as far as timing though if you think if there's um a problem with the engineer giving them applicants some additional things to do and they know it prior to the meeting would it be smart for the applicant then to postpone their they're coming to the planning board for the next meeting so they don't have to pay the fee and, and we don't have to have the people get paid and you know I, i'm thinking if they know there's going to be an issue maybe they should just postpone their time a little that's all there's 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 two different ways to to look at it first i like to say we do have quite a few people come in for meetings without the attorney and, and the engineer yeah we do have these we have those at the end of our regular meetings uh, that's number one. The second thing is, yes, uh, they certainly can postpone it. That's up to them. We right. did at our last meeting have one of the applicants decide that he couldn't answer the question in time and did postpone it. You know, this is not only a question of the fees that they pay yeah. for the engineer and the lawyer for the town, but also for their own professionals who are there. Yep. Exactly. But certainly having Zoom meetings is cheaper because it reduces the travel time, which they're going to be paying for, you know, their own professionals if they come to the, if they come to the meeting. So these meetings actually have made it a little bit cheaper because there is no travel time involved. Yep. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Are we okay with that now? Well, let's move on. Hey, move on? Yeah, move on. All right. Uh, Recreation Committee. I have nothing. I know that. Uh, so we're done. Uh, we had the trail. So that's part of recreation, Howard, right? The new trail, Nature Marlboro Nature Trail. Uh, I know that the, uh, the uh, playground has been well used. Uh, I know that the gazebo is going up. Joe DeSoma is doing this remarkable job with that gazebo. Uh, the two. I, want, I want to give props out to um, Katia for Zumba because she has been continuing her classes free of charge for residents of the town. And she's, you know, she did it outside almost the whole summer free of yeah, charge. She did a great job. And she's brought it inside now and she's kept it down to 10 people. They wear masks doing Zumba. I don't know how they do that, but they do it because I've seen the video. Yeah, and she's been doing this free of charge through this, uh, you know, pandemic we've been through. So I really want to give her props for doing that for our community. So it's so noted. So noted. Very good. It keeps those people. And she had that crew, I guess she had a 10 year anniversary with the yep. same people. I saw yep. the videos. They do a great job. I don't know how they do it with the mask either. But God bless them. Uh, it's an outlet, it. you know, it's an outlet for them. And that's great. I think that's great to exercise and do all those great things. I, uh, besides that, I, I really, do uh, you have anything, Howard, on recreation, Ed? Nope. Nope. I think that's, that we I do. Mean, she was on I, had, I, I had mentioned about uh, a skating rink, and I don't know if we want to pursue that or not. Uh, I think different. during this time, my opinion, anyhow, is to we let it go this year. Mm -hmm. I think you just cause another problem where people yeah. are going to be next to each other. Yep. Okay. okay. Uh, it is outdoors. Yeah, but they're still. They're the still thing with the ice skating ring is tough. You know why I think it's tough, Howard, is just because the temperatures that we get now. Yeah. I don't know if it, does it stay cold enough all the time to keep that ice cold. I mean, maybe it does. I mean, it, it's tough, right? Then we'll have maybe somebody to totally shovel the snow. On. Well, I think if yep. we were to put it, like if we were ever to do it, like when COVID's gone, under the, if, it ever, uh, pavilion? if it was ever under done pavilion. under the pavilion, you would use the nighttime temperatures and you wouldn't get afternoon sun. So it would stand yeah, that's a lot more true. chance and it would be a lot shallower that's water. So it would work, that's I think. I mean, even yeah, in yeah. what, hey, a mild winter. Yeah, I guess I can see that. Like last winter. Probably like last winter. Idea. Yeah. Last winter. Yeah. But, I mean, I think it's definitely once we get out of this, it's definitely worth something we should look at it wasn't that much of a cost if i remember when alan looked at no, it it was no, that cost. wasn't that much at all i was just trying to think of something we could offer to the town because there's yeah. really nothing there's the basketball leagues are sort of non-existent and uh, so yep just yep. Tough, very tough to do anything so, so it's it's tough with covid yep. uh Alan, how are we doing with the uh, Emergency Management Preparedness Committee? Did we put anything in there for COVID and that whole thing? Or I think we're going to start like an email discussion about it that, you know, we have to figure out what we did during the pandemic and what's going to work. I'm actually trying to dig up, like, to see what other cities and towns did. Um, I think it's just going to be a separation of our employees, basically. You know, there's administrative, there's highway, there's police. So there's a big, I think we had a lot of confusion, I'm going to be honest with you. When we did kind of what we did early on, we didn't know what we were doing because it had never happened before. But I think, and there's no slight to our town employees, I think everyone thought like, hey, I work for the town. Like, why are you doing this for them and not doing it for us? And there's just different responsibilities and, and different job titles for each person from administrative to highway to police. You know what I mean? So I think that yeah, needs like to be- Overall? Well, it needs to be defined. It really needs to be defined what department you're working in. Are you administrative? Are you highway? Are you police? I think all those really need to be regimented and, and defined as what the what our protocol will be, you know, in the event of another pandemic. I would just yeah. I would just offer that. And I think I sent it in an email that they're yeah. in the town. Towns and talk of the towns and topics magazine that we get. There was a two or three page article on on the, the mandate, really, that we have. And they lay out some guidelines for putting together something like this. So maybe that's something we can look at, too. Yeah, I mean, if we're going to set like a policy, then, I, you know, it's going to need a little bit, a little bit more research, I think, but I, I really do think that 
I think we did a great job, to be honest with you. I think we were very proactive. I'm not patting myself on the back and pumping us up, but I really think we were very proactive and, and we jumped ahead of a lot of what other towns did, but we just mm -hmm. think we can define it in black and white. So do you think it's something that we have to do before the uh, reorg meeting to put in the... Uh... I don't know if you want to force something in. I mean, Howard, again, brought up that. What, what was the date, Howard, that, that was on there? It's, it's the April 1st April. date, same as the uh, police uh, reform date. Uh, but before that, we're supposed to review it with the uh, with our unions by February 4th. The legislation requires plans to be submitted to unions and labor management committee within 150 days by Thursday, February 4th, 2021, affording the opportunity for comment within a reasonable time frame, and then responding to those comments and having it done by, by April 1st. They call this new emergency planning requirement for New York state towns becomes law. Should they give you guys any guidelines of any kind or? Yeah, it's yes, in the, it's yes. in the, there uh, are guidelines in this article. Um, in yeah. that article, right? Yeah, yeah. It is. I read it a couple of times. It's, I don't think it's that complicated, but. Yeah, I don't think um, it is either. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be very complicated. I just think no, we need to do it right. It's kind of like what time. you said, Alan, a list of this uh, positions that are considered essential protocols for the facilitation of remote work description of how the employee could stagger shifts, things that we've already done. Yeah. So we just kind of need to follow it on paper guidelines, right? Yeah. Put it on paper. Exactly. I mean, by the word essential, every single one of our town employees is essential. It's essential to the town and, and the function of the town and the, you know, yes. the daily and the yearly function. So just needs to be some definition of, you know, what the job description is and then can, the, can this be done remotely and can this not be done remotely? And right. It's not going to be, we're not going to have to reinvent anything. Nope. Just define it. Okay. There's some, uh, well, yeah. So would you like to work on that, Alan, or? Yeah, I'll work on it. I've been kind of working on it. Okay, good. Appreciate it. I think if you, yeah, if you follow just step by step the way they have it laid out here and just fill in the blanks, it might be pretty short. You get the magazine, right, uh, Alan? We all yeah. do, don't we? We yeah. all do. Yeah. Well, I just, uh, just making sure. Okie doke. Okay, appreciate it. Uh, no report for uh, the CAC. Uh, IT, I, I did receive my computer. Uh, the uh, screen is on backlog. Uh, sometime in December, they was wondering why I got, why uh, Mr. Brooks got such a great deal on it. But, uh, so it's backlog. A lot of things are backlog because of COVID. Uh, but everything is running well. Uh, no glitches at the town hall. Everything running well for you, to Chief, right? Not a problem? Yeah. No problems. Doing no good. Uh, Milton Train Station Foundation, like I said, uh, Sherm stepped down for some personal reasons. And uh, John is now uh, the... Uh, the president, and I think Dennis McCord also stepped down as treasurer and Ed Mackey is the treasurer. And then the regular people are still there. Al, uh, Al small item on that. Could we, uh, could we get that fence fixed? The southern, southern end of the, the fencing that's bent? Is that uh, our responsibility, right? We, they uh, definitely looked at it. I don't know. I think they ordered the foundation ordered the fence. So I, I think it has to be replaced. I don't think it be, could be straightened out. We could look at it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Milton Landing uh, Citizens Committee. I think everything's been going good. We've been following what's going on with, you know, with Brandy sending the emails. Um, the park's still being used. I yeah. believe it or not, it's been quite busy during the whole COVID stuff. But even during the winter time, I actually drove down there today. There's people down there for lunch. You know what I mean? Uh, hopefully, we can get the pier up. Uh, who knows what winter's going to bring? And I think gonna uh, the pier is going to be 2021. I yeah. think uh, you know we were told it was going to be 2020, but because of all the uh, different order change order with the pilings and stuff like that, uh, my understanding is that they're constructing the frame for the deck, uh, the subcontracts is doing that. And I don't know if what is gonna permit actually barging it up and putting the decking on. Right. So 
So Scott and, and Eddie, or, all of the piles are in the 24 piles that were required. Those are in place. So what Alan and Alan are talking about is the, the framework that sort of ties them together that form that is the basis for the, the, the platform for the the wooden uh, packing that would go on top of it. So uh, now we were hoping to get it all done by the end of the year, but that doesn't look like it's gonna happen. It's gonna obviously here we are in the middle of December. So it's gonna be probably in the spring. So and talking about down there, did we ever get the finalization on the crossing and the fencing and what needs to be put up? We never got that, right? Yeah. From we got the uh, we got the courts to uh, agree with the town to put up a uh, press uh, a, a gate gated crossing and a pedestrian crossing. I've been talking to uh, Gregory Hart and uh, I send them a couple of pictures and saying that the, you know our prayer is going to be done. I haven't heard anything about the uh, the crossing. I've been bugging him. Uh, he says uh, he hasn't received anything from uh, uh, the state. Uh, of course, DSX is uh, going to drag their feet as long as they can. So but I haven't forgotten about it. I've, I've oh, been, I know you haven't. I'm just wondering I, if you heard anything back because yeah, like I, you said, close with the pier. So yeah, you know. nothing. Uh, dra I haven't heard anything. I, you know, and I, uh, matter of fact, Scott, I, I send them a picture of uh, the, uh, all the pilings in and say, Hey, look, uh, we're, we're building this pier and still haven't heard anything about the crossing. Yeah. So, yeah. so he, a week later, he apologized and got back to me. He says, uh, I've been trying to get a hold of him, but, uh, you know, I said, well, you know, uh, you told me that there was uh, the money was allocated and you started the design. I think the design was thirty thousand dollars. The allocation was in the six or seven hundred thousand for the uh, two for the pedestrian and for the gate. And uh, so I keep on bugging him. Uh, Maybe yeah, but if we don't get that if we don't get that determination back and we get the whole pier up, we, we just would continue to use the current crossing. With yeah, no, yeah, they can't. They they, they can never take that crossing away. away. They can't take our crossing. Can't take away. it away. That's so uh, that's deeded to us. That was the whole uh, thing fifteen years ago when uh, yeah. Mr. Rusk looked at that and said it's a deeded uh, yeah. crossing. So they can't take that away from you. I guess part of the assumption was everything's kind of up in the air with regarding state funding. So yeah, it's good to keep back bugging him, but you know, I would kind of assuming the funding is kind of yeah scarce these days. Yeah. State, so. Well, I think that yeah, I think the like you said, yeah, you, know, you never can tell. Even though the funding has been allocated, because now the budget is really in bad shape, probably holding back on a lot of stuff. Right. Uh, yeah. So that's, you know, that's why I, I'm very proactive once I get the uh, the billing for, uh, like, for the phase two sewer, I got everything from uh, the transmittals and the cancel checked and stuff like that. I put that in today because mm -hmm. you never know when you're going to get your money back now because of COVID-19. So, right. And we'll do the same thing with the uh, remainder for the, uh, for the uh, uh, playground. Okay. So I had no report on the uh, Marlboro Hamlet Economic Development Committee uh, meeting Marlboro. Uh, Sheila, would you like to say anything about meeting me in Marlboro? Yes. Can you hear me? Uh, absolutely. Yes. yes uh, okay. Can. Good evening. Hi. Um, Hi. Yeah, I, I just wanted to kind of give an update. Thank you for having me. Uh, I want to let everybody know that um, we are in the process right now of our membership drive. Um, we're trying more than ever um, to support our local businesses. Are you getting feedback? You're good. You're good. Okay, good. Um, so we just, just want to be sure everyone knows this, and we want to invite all the businesses, services, um, you know, artists, not for profit. We include the civic groups, but you know, we want to reach out and make sure everyone knows that we're doing this. This is our seventeenth year. Um, and we want to be sure, you know, again, if anybody has any questions, they could just email us and we can help them um, to understand the membership. And we have different levels. So we've tried to accommodate everyone. Um, 
We're also going to be improving our business directory on our site and on our printed material, hopefully this year. So we're gonna to try to make that more streamlined, um, make it all one page, hopefully be able to add uh, business photos or logos, things like that. Um, we also have put together a welcome letter, hoping that we're gonna be able to have it distributed through either maybe down at the town or through realtors. We actually are putting a letter together to reach out to realtors in the area, um, letting them know about us. And this way, if somebody moves in the area, they can maybe give them a meet me and Marlboro brochure or a list of all the service inter and uh, businesses in our area. And that also includes in our site and on the, um, for sure, not only just businesses and services, but it's civic groups. It's, you know, really we're trying to list everyone, even down to the groups, meaning Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, things like that. So it's a full list of everything. Uh, so we're, we have that letter ready. Um, we're also, I hope that you've been getting our newsletters, been trying to be more active with the newsletters. Um, you know, we did a, the small Saturday business. Uh, we also have been doing the holiday ones. I'm going to try to continue. Um, if you have something coming up or if you know of something, please email us. I try to be really good about checking Facebook and trying to be up on everything that's happening. And I feel bad I missed the tree lighting. I did include the Santa run. And uh, I think that uh, Sawyer's emailed us and they're having a Zoom with Santa. So, you know, it's not just promoting the, I hate to say just, but it's a mix of the community and, you know, supporting our local businesses. So if you get the newsletter, you know, please share it. Um, I don't know if there's a way to do that. Uh, even if you just share it on your Facebook page, that would be a plus you know, for more people to see it. So we would appreciate that. Um, congratulations on the new uh, nature trail. We're excited about it and we look forward to adding it as an additional attraction on our website and in our brochure. We list that. So we list the, the dog park, we list uh, Milton Landing, the train station. They're all in there. Um, trying to think of what else I could tell you. I think that's pretty much, I tried to go over my list here and I think I pretty much covered, oh, our local resource page. So we had up when COVID hit two main pages. One was at, right on our homepage, uh, the local resource page. What it was is for, to make it easy for people to know what was happening, meaning uh, what businesses, their hours, their operational procedures. I think we're headed for that again. Um, so we're gonna to try to put that back up. So this way people will know, you know, if businesses unfortunately are, are closed or they're limiting their hours or, you know, whatever new changes are coming down the path. So we're gonna do that. Um, so I think that's, um, and we of course look forward to working with the town and Ulster County Tourism and trying to, you know, put our heads together to support our businesses in this coming year because you know we're all going to need it definitely uh, i know the farms you know they did well and the wineries due to this um a lot of people wanted to get out um but you know it's the small businesses in the hamlets that really need our help too so if there's anything that you know you want to suggest to us uh we're you know we'll hopefully be having a meeting um and doing some brainstorming but mainly I wanted to get the word out about our membership. So if you see a business that's coming to your table, um, you know, uh, I don't know how quick they would be opening, but, you know, please put a word in for Meet Me in Marlboro as sort of your local chamber and or our local support team here. And we'd love to reach out to them and see what we could do. I think it's a plus for our town that they know there's a not-for-profit group out there willing to help promote their business. So um, that's really all I have. I hope everybody is well and safe and uh, have a happy holiday. 
Thank you, Good. Sheila. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you Sheila. I mean, I, an example of what you just mentioned, Sheila, is a, a gentleman came before the planning board as an exploratory uh, last meeting, and he wants to do a. Uh, Where are we? Yeah, what is he wants to do a, a beer. Uh, brewery. 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 Farm okay. brewery. Yeah. 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 So uh, we, you know, we, and Marlboro didn't come up, but certainly if this pans out and we goes forward with it, certainly that would be a case where we should bring it to his attention. And as far as the, the so what you're asking, and it's it's always, uh, we, we don't always get it right sometimes, but we just need to communicate a little bit better and, and work uh, with each other a little bit better on what's going on in the town. And I'm sorry we didn't invite you to the trail. Uh, opening explicitly uh, we tried to get the word out as best we could but uh, sometimes and we had to change the date at the last minute so that didn't help but uh, we look at the trail as part of our economic development plan in the hamlet of marlboro anyway and for the whole region and the whole town so uh you guys are the best in terms of our you're our chamber of commerce so we we do certainly appreciate what you do and we support you so no, thank you. And I, I have, I heard in the conversation somewhere that somebody is opening up a new B and B. Something like that is really, you know, uh, you know, we would love to know. I, I try to be very good about watching and listening and the pages, but you know, you guys are it. And so if you, you know, again, I think that um, if a business comes to it table or even a realtor a developer please you know give them if you want cards i can leave cards or brochures and just say give them a call or an email um because i think that all residents moving in i know i'm sure the realtors are already utilizing meet me and marlboro as a selling point to come into marlboro which is a good thing you know um it's but you know more so for the new residents to be informed on what businesses and services they can render right here in Marlboro and keep our businesses thriving. That's the biggest thing. And um, so we, you know, we want to just get the word out. So I appreciate it. You might, uh, you know, on, a, on our uh, webpage, when the planning board uh, uh, agenda comes out, you might check that out too and see who's in front of the plan, uh, even though it might, you know, it's the beginning stages of the planning, but you might uh, get a feeling of who's doing what. Okay, yeah, that's a good idea. I don't know, Al, if it's okay. I know you have the brochures upstairs. Um, maybe, I don't know if it's possible to leave some brochures downstairs, you know, um, the people who are coming in in front of the board, they might decide, hey, let me pick this up. It's got Marlboro on it <laughs> and contact us any which way, I don't know but yeah. I appreciate it. Maybe when we get back to uh, having the, uh, the yeah. town board meeting at the, uh, at the justice okay. department. But okay. uh, definitely uh, thank you for all you do and uh, have a great holiday and Merry Christmas and- uh, You too. Yeah, to you and your group, appreciate thank all you. you do. Thank you, you too, stay well. Stay well. Thanks. Uh, it's ha Hamlet of Milton Association Committee. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, if everyone went down there and saw, they actually decorated, did a really nice job. It looked yeah. really nice down there. Um, it was a small crowd and they didn't really do their normal celebration. So that's all I got. Okay. And uh, the transfer station review, uh, we have the uh, contract. So uh, basically, I think, uh, yeah, it's on the new business. So when we get there, I need the approval from the board to sign that contract. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have not received anything on the uh, Tomback Rehabilitation Update. Uh, the LWRP, gentlemen, we did receive the L LWRP. We got a nice uh, thing from the state saying that we have completed the LWRP, which is, uh, you know, extremely a benefit to the town as far as going after any grants, knowing that you have that LWRP and all that work done and the harbor management and that whole thing, comprehensive plan and everything that was created because of the LWRP. And uh, so uh, my hat's off to uh, Rosemary and uh, Jerry and, uh, you know, everybody that worked on that, uh, uh, Mr. Baker. Uh, 
And anybody, if I forgot anybody, I apologize. Uh, and John Behem, of course, he was uh, very influential in doing a lot of the work, especially the comprehensive plan and a lot of the stuff, the harbor management and stuff like that. So uh, Danielle has ordered a nice plaque so we could put that uh, 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 certificate in the plaque and hang it up in, uh, in the supervisor's office or outside someplace. But uh, definitely it's a, it's a, it's a, something that the town could really be uh, uh, appreciative and proud of. Uh, not too many towns have that. And it took six years, but, you know. So, Al, I would like to move that we strike that item from the agenda going forward. Yeah, that's Second. Right. Wow. <laughs> that was on there a long time. <laughs> yeah, six years. <laughs> Uh, uh, Mr. Osborne actually got the uh, grant uh, with, uh, yep. uh, uh, who was it? Uh, prior, uh, Bar prior. Barton and Lejudas? Yeah, uh, yeah, Barton and Lejudas. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And uh, it's done. So, yeah. did I get a second on that to take I it I seconded off? it, yeah. Alan, I seconded it. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Uh, the water district improvement I haven't received anything that and uh, we talked about the short term rental. Uh, we're, we're waiting for a lawyer. I, I think what, what Tom and I were talking about to see if uh, we thought maybe like the uh, different codes that we have come up with that we have to, uh, you know, it's a we want we want to streamline it and we want to streamline it in a way that is the it's clear to the applicant and it's clear to the uh, planning board so uh the uh the idea is possibly to have a a site plan and a like uh like you have a major subdivision and a minor subdivision maybe you have a site plan major site plan and a minor site plan and under the my, minor site plan you streamline it so this way the applicant knows exactly what it has to do, and hopefully it's just two meetings. And uh, because uh, basically we'll want their neighbors to know, so it will be a public hearing. So, and so the first, uh, uh, possibly the first meeting would be to present it, and then the second meeting it will be uh, once they get the okay to send out the green cards for their neighbors, and then at the second meeting it will be all done. So. Uh, we'll see what the the attorney comes from. We uh, was researching something and it came up. That's what uh, some towns in Buffalo are doing. So this way it's clear, and uh, it's going to be presented to the town board, and then you look at it and see if if you like it, if you don't like it, disapprove, and we move forward and along with Tom. So uh, the new business, uh, I need a motion to sign the uh, new uh, five-year contract on the transfer station and uh all motion any a second a second all in favor bye all right i think i think that's the right way to go i i you know with the liaisons i you know the the whole thing like with uh uh new Pulse did with the franchise they ran into some problems but basically, if you're thinking about it, I mean, we would put basically two companies out of business, local business. We would. They, would, they, they, could, they couldn't compete with uh, uh, waste management or county and all those things, you know, they just do that. So I think uh, we keep the landfill open and, and see what happens down the road in the future. And then uh, the reorg meeting, we have to have a reorg meeting uh, prior to the next meeting because of checks. We went ran through this last week, uh, last year. And so uh, I was suggesting maybe the 5th or 6th, which is a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Uh, basically, nothing's really changed. We have a couple of fee changes by Mr. Corcoran, uh, building inspector. Uh, so I'd probably be... Uh, minimum a half hour, 45 minutes. So whatever date works for you, the fifth or the sixth, so I could tell Tina. Fifth uh, is better for me. That better for you, Ed? Yeah, the fifth, yeah. Okay. 
The six is better for me. It doesn't matter. What time is the meeting? Same time. Yeah, we do it at seven. We have it seven. If that's to accommodate matter. everybody, is that good? Yes. I'm yeah. fine. Okay, so uh, it'll be the fifth. It'll be a Zoom meeting. And Howard, if you could set that up with Tina. Yeah. Uh, correspondence, I have a couple of correspondence. If I can find them. Ah, come on. Okay. We have uh, a request for the uh, Delta Alpha Gamma Society uh, for August the 16th of 2021 to uh, uh, rent the park, uh, the Poet Chance Memorial Park. Uh, they do this uh, every year. Uh, and uh, it's uh, between the time of 12 and 5 p.m. It's about uh, 25 to 30 women participate and would be uh, uh, by, by the rules established for the use of the park and the pavilion. Hopefully by then, uh, everybody has the vaccination. So uh, they would like to waive the fees. So uh, I need a motion to waive the fees for them, uh, a nonprofit organization. A motion. I need I'll a second. second. All right. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Thank you, gentlemen. And just a reminder still. Um, the toy drive is still going on. So if you uh, have a couple of bucks in your pocket, if you'd like to get something, uh, it's on our website. Uh, so uh, that helps all the people in our area that are needy during this Christmas time. Uh, it's a great thing that the police uh, do. And I appreciate Jennifer and Tina and everybody involved that uh, does whole, the, whole, the heavy lifting. So, uh, that's still going on. And uh, that's about it for correspondence. Uh, we're I, got good. Some, I got Hold something on. out. Okay, uh, just one second. And so, uh, Danielle, we're good for the, the date that they want that, and Colleen, for the date they would like to have that, right? Yes, I okay. double checked with Ralph uh, to make sure it didn't Coincide with, with, with the senior picnic and all uh -huh. that because uh, he likes to set up a little bit early and uh, it's on a Monday, so it should be fine. Okay. And it's the week after. Thank you very much. Ed? You're welcome. Yeah, I, I got an email. This probably pertains to you, Chief. I don't know why I got it. It says phone calls. It's from a Doreen Bongers. I don't know how she got my email, but anyway, maybe you could help me with the phone calls that I received with Milton and Marble numbers. That are soliciting phone calls. Who would who I would would I call to speak to about this annoying problem? Would you know? Please let me know if anything is annoying. Should I have her give you a? I don't think you could do anything either, right? If you forward it to me, there is a number she can call to log these. I'll also show her how to block the phone numbers that she's getting from. It's spam. Okay. spam really not a lot you can do, but I got some advice for her. Forward me the email and I'll reach out to her. Okay, you got it. Thank Thanks, you. Dad. Thanks. Yeah, they're on the roll. I mean, the span thing is, you know, you got a couple of things the other day saying your license needs to be renewed. Uh, yeah. so just, uh, the information that you need. I mean, I mean, it's Every not week. just to us, but it's some seniors look at that and they, 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 get, they get worried about that, you know? Every every week I get a call that the, my social security cards numbers being used illegally out in Texas. <laughs> I've been there for a while. We're not seniors, huh, Al? <laughs> yeah, I got my Medicare now, so I'm right with you. Wow, uh, not a problem. That's right. Hey, I did have seventy five. Al, yeah. Can I ask the board? Can we try one more time for um for our employees for the holiday? Maybe do like a meal for each department. Um, uh, 
maybe next week or the week after. I was thinking like uh, if it's an individual thing or we just have uh, stuff delivered to like say the police department, one to the highway department, one yeah. to the upstairs, something like why, that. Why don't we talk about that? Yeah. I could talk be in uh, you'll be in tomorrow. I could stop yeah. in if you're around. All right. Yeah, I'm going to be with the chief from probably I'd be in the afternoon. Okay. Just yeah. text me when you're available or I'll just okay. text you. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Good idea. Thanks. Uh, any public comments? I, I didn't see Mark Reynolds on the. Uh, no, I didn't see him either. Catherine is here. And I think I got James there. Yeah, well, uh, he already Catherine, spoke. Did you, want it, did you have any questions? Catherine? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I, have, I have one comment. I have one comment that I'd like to make. Sure. And I, uh, it's just an example of one of the things that I put on the site plan application, uh, which will help, I think, expedite things and make things easier. And that is to add in, the, we're going to add in the emails. Now, again, I can't speak for the whole board, but this is one of the things that uh, I thought was important to add into the site plan application. And I think it will help a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I'd like to move on uh, with the resolutions. Uh, resolution 77, uh, to reappoint members of the town of Marlboro Planning Board. Supervisor Land said it proposes the following, whereas there are four open seats on the town Marlboro Planning Board, be resolved that the following be reappointed to the town of Marlboro Planning Board. And that's Bob Transolita. That's from, and all the dates are the same. So it's 1231 to, uh, their ending is 2025. That's a five year. Uh, Manny Couchy, uh, Joe LaFaro, and uh, Chris Brand. And moves for its adoption. Colleen? Councilman, Councilman Corcoran? Yes. Councilman Melanelli? Yes. Councilman Koenig? Yes. Councilman Baker? Uh, yes, with the comment that we need to work on staggering those appointments somehow. So that's aside from this vote, but uh, just want to comment. I agree with you. Yeah. Okay. Roger Lanzetta. I'll work on that. Uh, yes, thank you very much. What we could have done is made like some of those appointments only so many years right now instead of all of them being the whole five yeah, years. Five. Yeah, two threes and five. And, and you break the code because in the code it says five. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's the only way you could do it, though. You have to do yep. it when you point these next people again for the next five years. You have to break it then, but you got to change the code prior to that. Right. Let's see how we could do that legally. Well, you could do a temporary. I mean, maybe we could ask the attorney, can you do a temporary uh, appointment? Just to get back years? on schedule. Yeah, that, that might be the way to go out. Ask the attorney for a slick way to yep. do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it, it, so it, in the, you could change it. I mean, you want to keep it five years. You don't want to change it to seven years, even though there's well, a seven I think keep it five years, but maybe like take two or two of those people or three of those and say like it's a three year term only for this one time. And then the next year. That's, let me, I'll actually could, tomorrow. I just However, it staggers out. Seven years, but you know, if you have seven people, it should be seven years, but let's, let's ask the lawyer see what he asks. So. Okay. Well, last time we asked him, he said, it's up to us. Hey, we can make it 10 years if we want. We can make it two years if we want. So I think I got something from Ron saying that it, it thought seven years and he could stagger it back in the day. But let's, I'll talk to legal. I'll talk to uh, Jerry Kamatis about it. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I got your permission to talk to the lawyer. Thank you. Thank you. So... Uh, <laughs> Resolution uh, Resolution 78 is to appoint members of the Town of Marble Ethics Board, whereas there are two opening seats of the Town of Marble Ethics Board be resolved the following, be reappointed, and that's Justin Pascal, uh, and that goes to 2023, and Vincent Messine Menisi, that goes to 2023 also, and moves for its adoption. Councilman Corcoran? Yes. Councilman Molinelli? Yes. Councilman Koenig? Yes. Councilman Baker? Yes. 
Supervisor Lanzetta. Yes. Uh, resolution 79 to transfer funds. Supervisor Lanzetta proposes the following, whereas the town board needs to approve the transfer of funds be resolved that the following be transferred. Transfer $32,949 from Police Vehicle Reserve Fund A.2030.003 to General Fund A.0200.00 to cover the cost of uh, police vehicle purchase for 2020 and moves for its adoption. Councilman Corcoran? Yes. Councilman Molinelli? Yes. Councilman Koenig? Yes. Councilman Baker. Yes. Supervisor Lanzetta. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, so um, I just want to end up because we're not going to meet uh, until the New Year's for our reorg. And I just want to say, even though the COVID-19 hit us pretty hard, it hit everybody hard, especially in the county, in the state, in the country. Uh, I just want to give a a uh, shout out to all our, our employees who just kept on going, uh, doing their job, not missing a beat. Uh, and they're commended for all the hard work they have done. So uh, I'm sure the board appreciates them too. And uh, we're almost to the end maybe. Uh, so with the vaccine coming around, but uh, it's still very important to uh, take care of each other by wearing our masks and keeping the social distancing. Uh, as you heard from uh, the uh, legislator, uh, Thomas Corcoran, numbers are going up. Uh, so we have to be very careful and uh, considerate for each other. But thank you to the town board. Thank you for a fantastic job. Uh, the uh, highway department, building department, assessors, the clerks, uh, Chris Wilkow, Tina Rosa, the courts. Uh, and the police. And the police, of course, the police. Thank you very much. I probably uh, I didn't want to leave anybody out like we did uh, meet me in Marlboro. Anyhow, uh, so just an outstanding job and I appreciate it as the supervisor of the town. It made my life a lot easier while you guys working together and working hard. And we accomplished quite a bit. And I'll, I'll do that, uh, my town board uh, uh, 2020 uh, accomplishment uh, at the reorg at the next meeting. But that being said, uh, just to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and my Jewish friends a happy Hanukkah. And uh, I guess uh, you would like to see the Browns win. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if anybody would like to say anything else please feel free to do that uh, you know if you'd like to say anything uh, before we meet in January I leave it up to you guys but I, I did my spiel I, yeah. I, I just say ditto Al ditto and I yeah. thank the town board I think we have a great town board and I think we do a good job for our town and Merry Christmas to everybody and Happy New Year and Happy Hanukkah Thank you, Scott. I, I, I wanna, I'm, I'm very proud to be on this board. I think that with the five of us that have been together, I've been here 13 years, and this five, the five has accomplished more than any board that I've been on in the, in the 13 years I've been on the board. I Police agree. Department, great. I mean, Jerry, you guys do a great job. Believe me, I never get a complaint about the police, ever. And and that's the truth. Uh, and, and as far as Tommy with the, you know, and the hot, uh, taking care of all the building and all that stuff, Another great job. I mean, I know I could say great job by everybody that works for us. They're just, just great people. And I'm just proud to be part of this board. And uh, happy holidays and happy new year to everybody. And be safe and have a great, great 2021. Thank you, Ed. Well said. And Alan, uh, you, would you like to close uh, with something? Oh, does Howard want to say something? Does that? <laughs> I want to say, I don't believe what Eddie said. Just read the uh, Southern Austin Times, uh, Southern Times uh, newspaper about some of our neighboring towns and see the problems they have. So I agree, yep. we have a really good board and I hope we can stick together for a while. Sounds good.
All right, so it's my turn. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd like to basically concur with what everybody said. Um, we really, we really entered into like darkness uh, in March, and we all kind of looked at each other, and we were bouncing emails off each other. And this is, we went into uncharted water, uh, and I really think we did tremendously. We did, we we achieved safety, um, and we didn't know how to do it. And uh, I think we set a standard. Maybe some other towns took over. Maybe not. I don't know. But we were very proactive, and I'm very proud to be part of that. Um, every agency in our town really, you know, came to the fight. They really said, okay, we're not going to let this, you know, we're not going to let this slow us down. Let, we're going to do this. So uh, I'd like to congratulate them uh, for their great service. I'd like to wish everybody, you know, a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, and Happy Holidays along with a Happy New, you know, with a Happy New Year. Uh, I was trying to be a good boy this year. On top of my Santa list, my one thing that I want, maybe you guys can help me out with, as I can, I ask, my number one thing is a motion to adjourn. I don't know if I'm going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm second that, Alan. <laughs> second that. Second that. We'll second it all across the all board. Thank you. And everybody have a great Christmas, a safe holiday. Amen. Same to you, Al. Thank you. All right. Same to you, Go guys. Browns. Talk Go to you Brown. later. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. See you tomorrow.